shows out okay, there. Let's bring on a guy who's not a wacko. Believe in all this let's stuff. Let's bring in John Shadig of Arizona. Are. Congressman Shadig, uh, your, your fellow members, Nuga Bauer and his baby killer line thrown out there. Uh, Joe Wilson and his line, you lie. Uh, I'll admit, Ari Cantor got a shot at his headquarters the other day. This zeitgeist out there, this atmosphere of uh, throwing bricks through windows, this sort of uh, scary stuff that's going on. And the weekend's coming, and booze is now going to be added to it Friday and Saturday night. I know what happens in this country. If you're going into a weekend with craziness in the air, it ain't going to settle down at Friday night at 9. Your thoughts? I actually think it is going to settle down Friday night at 9. I think it's going to settle down the minute Congress leaves town. I think the reality is that this goes on in politics, Chris. Uh, my first job in politics was working for the governor of Arizona, taking phone calls, and I always got the phone calls from the crazies. The answer is we need to move away from this kind of rhetoric. This was a huge piece of legislation. It was intensely debated for almost a year. Uh, oh, intemperate comments were made on both sides, uh, and it's not surprising that perhaps more were made on the minority because the minority felt very shut out and I can make the yeah. case that they were shut out. There's no excuse for this, but uh, as a prosecutor, I don't think you're going to see uh, this go on. I don't think you're going to see it escalate. I think people have had their moment. I think that, quite frankly, uh, there's the focus on the press on it and everybody saying this is a bad idea and people, have, quite frankly, being disgusted at anybody who isn't saying that this is unacceptable, I think is going to cause this to uh, dissipate. The American American people are interested in getting on with their lives, and I think they're going to get on with their lives. What about your colleagues waving the Gadsden flag, the don't tread on me flag of the, of the Republic back in the early days of our country, over the side of the House wall there at the protesters, waving the flag and then apparently doing the cut your throat line, mentioning Nancy Pelosi. What do you make of that kind of behavior by your elected colleagues? Well, I, 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 the flag I'm looking at it flew. now. Okay, the flag they flew, I understand, was the don't tread on me flag. Is that the flag you're talking about? The Gadsden flag from South Carolina, yeah, from the, from the early days of our country, sure. I love uh, that flag, but it's used to our enemies overseas. And we used it to London people that are running our country when we were fought for our independence. It was never used against our own country before. That's the difference, Congressman. Oh, I agree. I, think. I don't think anybody was advocating that it be used against our own country. I think what they were talking about is that there was a sentiment in the crowd, and if you were here, there were 250, 350, maybe, uh, uh, maybe 5,000 people, I don't know, 1,000 people outside that side of the Capitol, off the, what's called the beach, uh, and members were standing out there. I don't think they were trying to incite the crowd. I think they were saying, yeah, some of us agree with you. Uh, this is an intense debate. People on both sides okay. feel very okay. strongly. It's the part of the debate that you happen to like. It's the part of the debate where we don't just agree on the little stuff that we do on a bipartisan fashion. It's where we articulate our arguments. And I think it's worth okay. noting, Chris, that never Well, the before, part I like is the argument, but let me just try this by Here's something I don't argument. like. Here's Glenn, Beck. Here's Glenn Beck today on his radio show saying that the Speaker of the House and other Democratic leaders walked out of the Capitol on Sunday in a way aimed at encouraging people to kill them. To kill them. Here's Glenn Beck today on the radio saying this. You say the Democrats are inciting. Look at this. Listen to this. I can guarantee you they walked out and said, what the hell do you have to do to these people to get them to kill us? To get them to kill us? No excuse what do you make that of Glenn Beck? Uh, there's no excuse for that kind of rhetoric. Uh, I told you I began my life as a prosecutor. Uh, that kind of rhetoric is not good for the nation, not good for the dialogue. Uh, but uh, that does not mean that we ought to be focusing the people on the out of the out of bounds, the over the top rhetoric. What we ought to be focusing on is where do we go from here? The reality is some of us believe this legislation won't solve the problem. And we want to go in and try to work on, OK, how do we fix the things that need to be fixed? And quite frankly, if the American people understand that but this was not the final bill. Republican ideas on how to fix health care didn't disappear when this bill passed. Life goes on. Reform goes on. And, and this is a country in which the people, including the minority, have remedies. They have the election uh, and they have all kinds of remedies yeah. other than violence. And we ought to be talking about the fact that they have remedies other than violence. Okay, Eugene Robinson's yeah. with me for the Washington Post. Yeah, I, Go ask Congressman. Well, uh, Congressman, I was there on Sunday, and the Republican members who came out on, on, on the balcony did whip up the crowd. And, and I, my question to you is, well, as a prosecutor. Well, of course they whipped up the crowd, but they weren't urging the crowd to violence. I mean, but, come on. But of course here, they whipped up the crowd. Question. 
Congressman, here's my smart. Well, wait, wait. I walked across the street on the opposite side where the pro uh, legislation people were, people were chanting, and they were whipping up the crowd as well. That's a part of what happens in this kind of discourse in America. Just holding but up he, the flag is not saying go throw a brick through a window or shoot through <laughs> a window, for God's no, sake. No, it's yeah. not. But here's my question. It, it, okay. Let's assume that 99.9% .9 of those the, the, the people in that crowd or in the Tea Party movement are, are absolutely law-abiding, sensible people who, who make their policy argument and, and then go home. It's crazy right. people who do crazy things. And, and you, you look out there, when you use the specific rhetoric and the specific, specific symbols that, are, that have been adopted by the crazy wing, by the people uh, you know, who, are, who are sitting at home waiting for the, the black helicopters to swoop down and, and confiscate their weapons, uh, and uh, it, it, you, know, you are giving those people permission uh, to, to have that fantasy and to act out that fantasy. Okay, are you what do you make of Nuga Bauer's comment, baby killer? What do you make of uh, Joe Wilson's comment, you lie? Both delivered on the floor of the House. What do you make of them? I think both are inappropriate. I think both are out of line. Uh, and I think the exploitation of those comments by both sides since then is inappropriate. Look, you know as well as I do that there are people out there fundraising right now on the violence that's already occurred. People on the left using that for a fundraising device. People on the right using it for a fundraising device. My point is we should condemn that. And you and I, as people talking to that audience of American people, which may include some crazies, ought to be reminding them that that is not what this society mm -hmm. is about. That in point of fact, they have the ballot, they have the right to peaceably assembly, peaceably assemble, and they have the right to get involved okay. in the process. And I don't think, I don't think that because they choose to wave a particular flag, that means that people who share their views shouldn't wave that flag because there's some nutcase in the audience. You know, I can't control what nutcases are in the audience on the right, and uh, the left can't control what okay. nutcases Let's are in the right. audience on the left. Let's hope you're right. Okay. Let's hope you're right. But just remember, you and I have grown up in this country. We knew that a very terrible incident in this country occurred a couple of days after a UN ambassador, our UN ambassador, Adlai Stevenson, was spat upon in Texas. These things sometimes escalate from words to actions and where the passions create a kind of a zeitgeist where a left winger kills our president in a right wing yep. atmosphere. I mean, you never know what nuts going to come out of the closet when the atmosphere reaches a certain pressure point. It does happen. I hope it doesn't happen this time. Of course, we the hope it doesn't. The we atmosphere do. is, is bad. I couldn't okay. agree more that the atmosphere is bad. But I think what we ought to be doing as public officials and you as a communicator and, con and, and commentator ought to be saying, look, there's no place for this on the left or the right, not whipping it up on the left or whipping up on the right and pointing out that this is a great nation because we don't have to turn to violence. We have the right okay. to petition to our government on a peaceful means and we have the right to and the obligation to to engage in dialogue and to talk about how we fix the system. Yeah, maybe, maybe the right wing should take this one in the chin the way the, liberal, the liberals did when Bush did his tax cut back in the early part of this century. They just well, took I, it in the chin. I, 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 no I rallies, no violence, says, no stone throwing, no bullets, nothing. They said, okay, well, come Bush on, won, you we lost. You, you don't know that this is all right wing. I mean, come on. You know that it's not necessarily no, all not right the, wing. I don't think a right winger shot a bullet through the headquarters of uh, uh, Barry Kander's office down in Richmond. I do agree. I said myself. And, and, and actually, the violence you do not can be know. coming because of the zeitgeist, the atmospherics maybe, that can, can splatter all over the place. Maybe it's the prosecutor in me, but I you know, don't think you know Clinton where any of this violence came from. As Bill Clinton I, I would tell say, tell you, do an investigation and find out who committed okay. what acts of violence. Nobody knows. Okay, as Bill it's, Clinton would I mean, say, in a different circumstance, nice tie. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll explain later. Thank you very much. U.S. Congressman John Shouting of Arizona. Thank My you, Gene pleasure. Robinson from the Washington Post. Chris. Up next, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi turns 70 tomorrow, believe it or not. Isn't that amazing?